Hello and welcome to the July edition of um, Year Flowers. I'm sitting in the Braybrook garden. The sun is just setting. Uh, it's one of my favourite times of the evening and I often come down here to have a little think, um, reflect on what we've done today, what we've got to do tomorrow. And at the moment, I'm just having a good look around the garden to check what to put uh, in your buckets this week. So I really love these um, Achilles behind me. They're very generous, um, quite prolific. They're first year flowering perennials, which means they do keep flowering for us, but we find they do their best in the second year. So these ones will get lifted at the end of the season. And then these are our new seedlings that have just been put in. These, these we expect to be flowering at the end of summer to complement our dahlias. And then we've still got roses looking absolutely gorgeous. And then into our dahlia beds, which are a complete mixed bag of stages and really must get these staked. Look at this one. I mean, it's, it, I, I, I'm not even sure the camera does it justice. It's got this sort of uh, yellow tint inside the petals. Absolutely delicious. Someone will be getting that on Friday. So uh, in the in our garden, um, Sis is going to be making a hand-tied bouquet with these elements. We thought that perhaps, maybe sometimes you want to share some of your, your blooms and um, take them to friends or family. And I thought it'd be a really nice way to look at how to play with the shapes. So over to Sissy. Hi and uh, welcome to another month in your year of flowers and we are deep into the English summer now and um, when I was contemplating what we would cover uh, this this month in our tutorial um, I've decided that you know it's time to share the love and um, you are obviously every month receiving really really beautiful abundant buckets and we thought you might actually want to share the love and uh, share some of the flowers especially if you've got flowers going in your own garden that you're cutting and who doesn't love the gift of flowers? So I decided that I'm gonna help you um, make your own hand-tied posy to gift for friends. So um, this month, the technique is, uh, it's not I don't tie bouquets in the traditional sort of spiral, um, mainly because I don't like doing things traditionally, uh, but also that gives you that really sort of very dome shape to the bouquet, which is not what I think uh, gives the nice, nicest movement to a bouquet. So I'm gonna teach you um, the sort of vase arranged bouquet where you use your hand as the vase. So I've broken the bucket out um, into sort of three different uh, vases. This is just to allow me to kind of see what I've got in the bucket and what I'm going to use. And I sort of put the foliage together and then kind of broken it down by colour. So the trick with tying any kind of bouquet is to make sure that everything you're working with is preconditioned, um, especially because you're going to be holding the bouquet in one hand. And if you're suddenly having to strip leaves, you know, from under the waterline, uh, it becomes really fiddly. Um, and I end up, you know, having to put things in my mouth and sort of strip like that. So be organized in advance. Um, and I tend to start with a frame of foliage. And you want to be thinking that your hand, which is gonna hold the flowers like the neck of a vase, is essentially the vase. So this, this clutch of fingers here, at the beginning, 
I will hold the branches in the sort of shape that I want my bouquet to be. And then I'll start threading the flowers in to position. Start with my focal flowers, which are um, this month, these incredible uh, sunflowers. And um, the tone between the leaves on the hornbeam and that sunflower are just guy's going to sit quite deep in that valley just because it is such a dominant flower um, but I'm gonna tear up alongside with this insanely beautiful sunflower um, got a real thing for black flowers I'm gonna let these two sit. sit very close to each other sort of almost one on top of the other with just a, a slight play on height just a, a slight. So I'm putting my main focal flower into the arrangement and then, you know, the, the branches are sort of twisted around that. So there is a point where you'll have to just keep, you know, retwisting things to get them back into the right shape. But I'm going to have that quite deep in the arrangement because it is so dominant. And then it's got these lovely leaves, which I may or may not leave on, depending on how the arrangement evolves. So, and then the other focal flower is this beautiful, beautiful rose. And I'm just going to strip off the sort of guard petals from the outside, which has protected the inner petals from any rain damage or rain. And again, I'm just weaving the flowers down, having removed any thorns on this one. In Taking a bit of time just to readjust the um, the other branches that have moved around as flowers are being added. Okay. So I am also I love Achillea, Achillea, Achillea at this time of year. Um, but what I don't really like on the Achillea, I don't really like being able to see the underside of it. I think this one is a really good one for sinking quite deep into arrangement and just looking at that. It's different in the garden, but looking at it, you want to be looking at it head on. Um, but it just is so beautiful for filling and providing that tonal color. So it's just really marrying these colors together. And sort of twisting them and adjusting their height and adjusting their direction to make sure that I'm happy with um, where And so you're twisting are. things and making sure that there's quite a lot of elevation. I'm, I'm you know, I'm really staggering and playing with heights. Um, and even though this is kind of above, you, it doesn't detract from the beauty of that sunflower that's stuck, stuck quite deep in. Now, the other thing to remember is not to forget the back. If I was doing this as a bridal bouquet, you want the bride to be actually looking at something as she's walking up the aisle um, but also you're thinking about the arrangement going all the way around so I'm gonna take another rose strip off and I'm gonna uh, and so that one is gonna face backwards so if Imagining it was a bridal bouquet, you'd be holding it and she would be looking down on that. But it also gives a really nice, you know, you can see the underside from this direction, but it allows the bouquet to be looked at from all directions. So we're getting a really nice shape. And what's happened now is that as I've started to add more and more, um, things are holding themselves into position more. Things aren't moving around as much and I feel more confident about the structure and, and not being worried that everything's going to slip. Got this 
gorgeous Nicotiana. Uh, so my inner like perfectionist uh, is is totally obsessed with like the tonal colour palette we've got going on here and like there's a part of me that just wants to just leave it with these really lovely totally sort of tonal blend. Anna in contrast would say no you've got to rough it up a bit and I think she's right so I'm going to start introducing almost sort of uh, colours that in my mind wouldn't go together like the blues of um, these beautiful blues and the scabious and the blue of the echinops and also this kind of dusky lavender that we have on this this gorgeous um, larkspur so I'm just going to start add adding in layers that will just you know provide interest and movement um, and constantly that mindful this leaf of is not really working for me so I'm going to remove that um, which gives me a bit more space to put flowers in around on this side I quite like how I've got the two sort of spires coming up this way, playing with that sense of height up there. We might go for some really shocking, oh look, you see, didn't take my own advice, did I? Now I need to strip this while I'm holding my bouquet. Naughty. So I'm gonna put that down into that space where that leaf I just removed was. And I'm gonna put that below that rose quite deep. So you're getting this lovely tearing. Just finding a gap in between. Just oh, I love that together. This lovely evening primrose, which we've never grown before, but which we are. So I've been adding in the layers, and now, sort of, as you get to the end, and you sort of want just to be adding in those kind of very, very fine dancing flowers, as I call them. So, and because they've got such fine stems, you can weave those through into my now quite dense lattice. It's become so dense I can actually sort of like shake it around without fear that things are going to fall apart. And then I just sort of bring that in to allow that to dance around of the others. Cosmos are some of my favourite dancers. It's got such a lovely happy face. So, I mean, it's got to the point where like, it's so now densely packed and I'm so unworried about it um, slipping around. You know, I could literally just put it down and it will pretty much hold its shape and I can, you know, look at it from behind and not be worried about everything falling apart, which at the beginning, you know, you're a little bit more cautious with. Go. So, uh, make sure the last thing I'm going to show you is how cut to cut your string how, before you start. Should probably have said that at the start, but anyway. Um, and then you just create a loop. So you loop it round, and then you're just going to pull the string through. Rest it on the edge of your table. Split the string, 
wrap it around once more and tie it a simple knot or both. So that's now tied my bouquet, which is you know full of loads of movement. I might sort of you know tweak some things into position a bit more now it's tied off by and large quite happy with where everything is so then you know you can do this obviously this could be perfect for a bigger vase like the ones we've been um, working with in which case you're just going to cut the stems straight down but I'm going to no, I also think that this is for a jug today so I'm going to cut all the stems right down Again, making sure that I don't really have any rogue um, leaves on the stems under the waterline. And then I'm just going to put that into my jug. And I would normally uh, not untie it before I put it into something, work out whether it can hold its shape if I do untie it, um, and only then do I untie it, or quite often I don't. So for this one, I think I could get away with it, um, with untying it, because the neck's quite tight. So in that case, then I would just undo my strings, pop it in. So there we have it, a hand tie. Um, for someone else or just for yourself. Um, as ever, we really look forward to seeing what you create and um, we hope you enjoy this month's flowers. <laughs>